We will now design a simple LEU that can carry out a few typical operations. So the op operations that this LEU is based upon um, can be found in the ERM Cortex M3 micro microprocessor core. So we're just going to design a 4-bit LEU for simplicity, but it can easily be scaled up to any number of bits. Because each of the circuits are essentially the same for a single bit, and then we're just combine them multiple times in parallel to make up the multiple LEUs. So this idea is known as bit slicing, so where you design the circuit just for one bit, but then just put multiple instances of the circuits in parallel. So here we can see the operations that we're going to do. We're going to do A plus B. We'll also do A minus B and B minus A. So we're going to do adder and subtractor. Then we've got some um, bitwise operations, logical operations. So A and B, A or B, A exclusive or B. And then we'll also do the bit clear, bit invert clear operation. So A and not B. And finally, two data movement operations. So B and not B. So the basic architecture of an LU is actually pretty simple. So each function in the LU, so each operation is just carried out by a particular circuit. So the inputs A and B in this case feed into each of these circuits. And then which actual output from these multiple kind of sub-circuits is fed to the actual output LU, uh, LU output is determined by a series of multiplexes. So the control bits of the LU kind of fed into these multiplexes and are used to control and route the signals around inside of the LU. So the operations can be broadly split into a logical oper uh, unit and an arithmetic unit. So the basic top level design can be seen here. So we're going to have our arithmetic unit and our logical unit. So these are two separate circuits and we can see that the inputs just feed into each so A goes into both. Obviously B goes into both as well. And then the outputs of these logic circuits then feed into a, mul a multiplexer. So the multiplexer essentially is just going to choose you know, which, which one of these uh, outputs to route to the actual circuit output. So we can either route the arithmetic unit to Y, we'll do an arithmetic operator, or a logic unit output to Y, and we'll do a, a logic operation. So if we consider this input to be 0 and say this is 1, so when f is 0 or 1, it's going to control uh, which one of these is piped to y. So for the case when f is 0, we're going to do an arithmetic operation. And then when f is 1, we'll do a logic operation. So if we, if we think ahead to the subtraction operations, so A minus B and B naught minus A, we know in each case, so that the subtrahend, so B and A, we need to be able to invert them, because to be able to convert them to two's complement, we need to invert them, because remember, two's complement, so minus uh, X, for example, and two's complement is not X plus one. So we need to do this inversion here. So we need to be able to invert A and B. And then also for the data movement operation, you know, we've got this not B function, so we need to be able to invert not B. So we need to we need to find a ways of inverting the inputs. And again, this is very easily done using a multiplexer. So we've got our value A going into the multiplexer. And then in the other input of the multiplexer, we've got A going through a NOT gate. So here, we're just going to have NOT A going into this multiplexer. And then again, if we consider this to be input 0 and input 1, depending on the value of F0 or 1, we can choose whether we send A or NOT A to Y. So for the case where F is 0, we're just going to get A, we'll just go into Y. And then for the case when F is 1 and not A here will go to Y. So just using these multiplexers and this uh, this bitwise, bitwise not uh, not gate we can uh, in, in, uh, invert our inputs very easily. So we do that for A. We also just do the same again for B. 
is exactly the same. The idea B just goes into a multiplexer and it also taps off through these NOT gates and then by choosing the value of F we end up with B or NOT B on the output according to this truth table. So now we can update our top level design of this um, LE. So now we've got our input inversion circuits on the inputs so now we can feed into each of these inputs we can feed A. So this here now can either be A or not A. And then again we can also get B, not B, A or not A here, and B not B. So this allows this will allow us to do the um you know this bit here will allow us to do the subtraction and then um this here will allow us to do the not B data moving operation. So now we've got these additional multiplexers. So now we've got three multiplexers. So it means have, we need to have three different control bits. So F0 we use to control the A input version. F1 will control the B input inversion. And F2 will select between either the arithmetic operation or the logic operation. So looking at the arithmetic unit first, this is essentially just the ripple carry header we've seen before. So A and B will go um, into here, well, or A or not A, depending on what we selected with the input inversion multiplexes. Or B or not B will go into here. So these will these will be the circuits that come into the ripple carry header here. And then we know if we want to do A minus B, for example. So we know A minus B is actually the same as A plus not B plus 1. So remember this is just the 2's complement of B. So we need to do this, add this 1 in here. So this is what we'll put into this first carrying. So we know if we're doing a normal subtraction. This first carrying will just be, z sorry, normal addition. That first carry-in will be a zero, then we'll end up just doing A plus B for example. But then if we want to do a subtraction, if we put the one in here, then we've also inverted either A or B, we'll end up doing a subtraction. So we'll either have A plus not B plus one, or depending on which input we've inverted, we might have A plus B plus one. So this will be the same. Is A minus B and this one with the same as B A minus A. So that's how we implement the arithmetic unit. It's very simple. So it's got a ripple carry adder, and essentially this um, input carry bit just determines whether we do addition or subtraction, assuming that we've uh, inverted one of the inputs accordingly. So now we can update update this top level design again. So again we've got our same control bits we had before, but now we need this extra control bit that has what controls. So that's basically does the select between addition and subtraction. And I've also carried out there's another output now as well, because we know from this from the ripple carry adder we've got uh, carry out. So this is just an extra output from our ALU now as well. And I've also just uh, renumbered these control bits, so, so they start 0, 1, 2, 3. So looking onto the logic unit implementation, so we need this unit to uh, do the bitwise and or and XOR operators. And we're also going to group in the data movement functions B and not B because they fit nicely in here. So this list here gives us a list of operators we're going to do in the logic unit. So we've got A and B, A and not B. So this is this uh, bit inverse clear operator. A or B, A, X, X or B. And uh, uh, two data movement operators. So we look, at, look, we look at these operations here. We can see that we actually only need a so in this 
in this unit we don't we never need the complement of a but we do need the complement of b so we know the inputs of this logic unit need to be a and b and um, not b as well so look at this diagram so we know we only need a so we can just put an extra input into the logic unit so this is always going to be a and then again using the same input selector we had before we'll be able to either pipe b or not b into the logic unit so th those are just the three inputs that we need in the logic unit so because we don't need if we look, if we look here we don't actually need f0 this is not needed in the logic unit and f2 as well we also you know that's not needed in the logic unit either well, it's not needed. It's not needed to select a or minus a, and it's not needed to either carry in or carry out in the logic unit. This is completely separate, so it means we can actually reuse f zero and f two inside of here. So we know we're going to get a coming in from the uh, a input, and then b or not b depending on uh, the b input inversion. Then we can just have a four to one multiplexer. So these are just a uh, different hardware implementation so this will be obviously for the bitwise and bitwise or bitwise exclusive or and then this is a data movement operation this is where we're just going to have b or not b going in here and then coming in later to the output so now because we've got these four different inputs on a four to one multiplexer we need to have two control bits so obviously two to the two gives us four so the two control bits allow us to select um, from four different possible inputs which, which are these so again because f0 and f2 are not needed here we can just reuse those control bits to control this um, multiplexer so we look at those inputs you know we can consider that to be 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 so depend those are the values of f2 and f0 and that will select which one of the logical or data movement operations we pipe onto y summarize that in the truth table here so and zero 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 one one zero one so depending on what the select bits are or the control bits and the multiplexer will just determine which of these inputs we end up piping onto y so again we can update our top level circuit diagram now so again so inside of here we know we've got this um, we know we've got our four circuits at our multiplexer and again so f0 and f2 can be used for these parts of the circuits but can also be used to control this as well because obviously depending on the value of f3 there's only this input will either go to the eight put or this one so by plugging all the numbers in we've just gone through there we can create this truth table for the LU. So depending on the values of these control bits, it'll determine which operator which operation we're doing. So we call these operation codes or op codes for short. So these are the binary codes, it's essentially the you know you know they select which operation the LC, LU will perform by controlling the different multiplexes in the circuit. But rather than having to remember 0000, zero, zero, zero it's gonna do a plus b they've also got um, mnemonics we call them so these are mnemonics are typically three letters longer they're more descriptive uh, name than the opcodes so obviously for a and b we're just going to call that the add operation and then for a minus b we'll just call that sub for subtract b minus a is just reverse subtraction we're doing it in the opposite order and then we've got and so bitwise and and then because these are typically three letters long or has just got this extra r in it just to kind of pad it out so we can select the a operator bit inverse clear exclusive or move and then move negative as well so by looking at these op codes we um we can look which multiplexers can are controlled and then figure out which operation 
at the end of. So, for example, if we wanted to do a plus b, so just do the first one, a plus b. So we know that this is 0 and 1. I'll call that 0, 0 and 1. So to get a to go into here, we know f0 will need to be 0. And again, to get b to go into there as well, we're going to need f1 to be equal to 0. When we're doing addition, we don't need the carrying, it needs to be 0, so we know f2 will be 0. And then finally, for this um, for this final multiplexer, we have to want to connect the output of the arithmetic unit to y, so we know that f3 will also be 0. So if in this case, our opcode is 0, 0, 0, 0. And this will do the add operator a plus b. You can see that corresponds to here. So for each of these operators, you can go through, look at the multiplexer, see which input is passed onto the multiplexer output, and that feeds into the output of the LU.